You are now listening to the Walk by Faith podcast. I'm your host, Jasmine Stiff, a.k.a. The Pretty Plug. I'm on a mission to tell the lost story that combines faith in God and success here on this earth. The world often separates faith and entrepreneurship as if, y'all, as if it was mutually exclusive. But I assure you it's not. I interview the following types of people. Entrepreneurs, business women, and business men climbing the corporate ladder. Founders of nonprofit organizations, college students following their passions, and also artists on the rise. They are movers and shakers in this generation, and I intend to plug you in week after week with content that inspires and educates you to be all that you are called to be. Thank you for tuning in, and now for this week's episode. everyone and welcome back i hope that you have had an excellent week you've been having an excellent wednesday because you're now tuned in to the walk by faith show we're on the sixth episode of season two now i have to thank each of you for listening week after week for the month of october we had over 800 listens and as of right now i have a consistent 20 people that support me monthly and I just have to say thank you because without you it would be no reason for me to get behind uh, this mic or behind this phone or use this anchor app if I didn't have people that are actually listening and getting something from this podcast I want to just say thank you to each of you that are just listening and you're rating and reviewing so right now there's a small call to action Rate this podcast. Give it five stars. Give it a review. Tell me how you really feel and then share it with someone. We are on our way to having over 1000 listeners a month or 1000 listens all together a month. And right now we have about 123 per episode so we can get that number up with your help. And I'm asking you just to share the podcast if you find it informative and that someone else can use it. So. Now to the fun stuff. I have a special guest. And this is like, where's going on our, what, 33rd ep- episode? But it's the sixth one on the season two. And this week on the podcast, we have my previous Region 5 president from the National Society of Black Engineers. He's a dreamer. He's a singer. He's a positive individual. You guys, every time I've ever met him, he's always just continued to uplift others. He's just a joy to be around. He loves God. He's an emerging gospel artist with a heart for the Lord. And y'all, he's located in Kansas City. Yes, he is. And he's making some waves down there. So I don't want to ruin his bio and I don't want to ruin just like him explaining to you everything that he is. So without further ado, I want to introduce to you, Mr. Roy Moore, the third Roy. How are you doing today? I am doing great. And thank you so much for that intro. (laughs) I greatly appreciate it. Yes, yes. You're welcome. You know, um, I'm just so happy to have you on the podcast. I've been seeing you moving on Instagram. And uh, I was just like, man, I got to get him. I got to get him on the podcast. I got to. So as our icebreaker, I always love to just, you know, channel into your expertise and then figure out, like, how, what you feel about it. And you're in the music industry. So can you tell us three things that you want to acknowledge, change, or share about the music industry that you didn't know before that the listeners can definitely benefit from? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. But first, I want to just say you are doing a phenomenal job with Walk by Faith, this podcast. And I've just enjoyed um, seeing the different clips on Instagram. And I've also seen you on your grind, your hustle, um, doing your thing on on Instagram and on this podcast. So keep up the great work. And all the listeners, thank you for listening and tuning in and rating. And please do all the things that she said. um, Prior to (laughs) introducing me. But yeah, three things that I might change or just maybe I've learned or um, being, being in this uh, industry and I'm just beginning. So um, I think just uh, keep 
keep pushing, you know, and doing the hard work. Um, nothing comes easy, and that's not just in the music industry, that's just in my life, but, you know, really set those goals and then, um, you know, just really go after them and, and keep going when you get the no's. You're going to get a lot of no's. Um, but that's been a blessing uh, for me in life in general, because it's like, wow, if you just keep pushing and you just keep trying, and if it's godly ordained, it's going to happen sooner or later. You just got to keep going. Um, I think the other thing, too, which is part of what we're doing right now is just being able to share with others. Um, you know, nobody makes it to, you know, their successful spot or, you know, their position in life, in their career. Nobody does it on their own. You know, you, you're always going to have to have help. And so when you begin to find out information, um, you know, just sharing that with with others. And so that's something that I try to do um, as well. Just trying to, you know, whether it's in a DM or whatever, talking to fellow artists about music conferences they can go to to learn about songwriting or learning how to publish their their music or even learning how to put it on platforms like iTunes and Spotify. And people think that's a very difficult thing to do, um, but it's really simple to do nowadays. And so um, different things like that. I know you said three things. I was probably like five, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good. And y'all, Roy is about to drop some gems and he's about to do it with just telling us more about himself. Roy, please toot your horn. Tell the people who you are because you are amazing. So just go ahead. Oh, my Lord. Um, <laughs> um, well, I um, I did grow up in the Kansas City, Missouri area, um, Raytown, Missouri, to be specific. Uh, was born in Germany because my dad was in the uh, Army uh, back then. Uh, didn't spend a lot of time there, but did most of my growing up in Raytown, Missouri. And then I came to Wichita, Kansas, which is where I reside right now uh, for school. That's how I got involved in the National Society of Black Engineers and how I met you, Jasmine, which yeah. is such a cool like moment for us and for us to be doing this um, now is, is awesome. But I majored in aerospace engineering at Wichita State University. Shout out to the Shockers all around the world. And um, <laughs> from that, I got my job at Spirit Aero Systems after interning um, for two summers there. And so Spirit Aero Systems is a tier one aerostructures company. We design and build um Aircraft fuselages, that's the part where you sit in. If you've ever been on a plane, if you, the part you sit in is called the fuselage. So we do a lot of uh, design work for that. And we build a lot of those and other airplane parts. Um, so that's kind of the day job. But then musically um, really started to develop um, that gift uh, while in college and, and post-college. Graduated 2015 um, from Wichita State and really just took a, a deeper dive into singing and learning how to write and just kind of exploring um, that gift. And so I've had the wonderful opportunity of doing a lot of uh, national anthems for um, Wichita State athletic teams, like the basketball team, baseball team, softball team, um, volleyball teams, and then um, translating that from Wichita State to the professional world. Um, I got to do a national anthem for the Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Royals, Oklahoma City Thunder, um, and a couple other organizations, minor league teams, baseball teams as well. Um, and then most recently, I'd say, um, had a chance to go to a, a conference called the um, Gospel Music Association Immerse Conference. Phenomenal conference. Any other artists out there that are trying to learn, um, develop skills, and just get mentorship, I recommend it. It happens in June in Nashville, Tennessee at Lipscomb University. And um, there was a there's a singing competition um, that happens there. And I was one of the five winners. Um, I sang a song called Mercy Said No, um, made famous by CC Winans, who's one of my favorite artists of all time. And um, I, I sang it a cappella and ended up winning winning that competition and um, had a chance to go to the Dove Awards from that and um, network and meet a whole bunch of other folks. And then a really cool um, story that you might be asking about later, but had a chance to sing with the rapper Common at a uh, festival here in Wichita, Kansas, and um, was pretty incredible. So God is, man, he's just been moving on, on my behalf, and um, I'm not necessarily perfect, but I'm certainly pursuing um, his will, and he, he's been blessing. So I, I, I'm so grateful to be able to do what I do, um, and I lead praise and worship um, at St. Mark United Methodist Church, out, out to all my St. Mark family, um, both campuses, um, and, and lead the men's praise team. We have a great time. So your local church is important. Everybody out there, your local church is important. It's not just about going on tour and doing stuff like that, but like being connected to the body of Christ locally um, is an amazing thing. 
Yeah. So now let's piggyback off that, you know, just the local church being super important. And it is great for any Christian to be like embedded in a church in their hometown. But Roy, when we spoke previously, you talked about church hurt and you also shared about your encounter with God and that kind of being how you started your singing journey. So at this moment, can you just talk about that experience and how you've been able to overcome church hurt and like what that even means. Yes, yes, I'd love to. And for your listeners, if you hear a little raspiness, it's because I've been singing a lot today. So um, we'll just keep going. But um, man, wow. So God is just amazing. Let's just start off by saying that. But um, in regards to like church hurt and how, how important one, I'll say the local church is so important because we're not meant to do life alone. And we're not meant to do this faith walk without the connection, um, you know, of the body of Christ. And so going to your local church and being involved in life groups and in ministry is important. No matter if you're a greeter, it doesn't matter if you're a greeter, somebody who's working in the media ministry on the praise team. It's just incredibly important to get that enrichment and that fuel during the week on a Sunday. Um, but in regards to church hurt, man, um, I know so many people experience church hurt and I used to be ashamed to talk about it. I used to be, um, I actually remember, you know, like I'll never share this with anybody, but basically I grew up in a church that I, I call uh, was uh, spiritually abusive. Um, but that's just a, a, another term for church hurt. And so we were not able to, um, I'll just rattle off some of the things we experienced as kids. So, um, girls weren't able to uh, cut their hair. Girls weren't able to wear pants. Boys weren't able to wear shorts. Kids couldn't do sports. Um, obviously, you couldn't listen to certain types of music, no TV. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. And it, it was so rough growing up in that church. It was a non-denominational uh, church. And um, they have churches all over the world. Um, they even had a church in Germany. Um, and so uh, it was really rough growing up as a kid in that. And you're having to go to school and, you know, being teased and watching my sister just be uh, picked on all the time because of, you know, always having to wear a dress or a skirt or something like that. And um, it, it was rough, you know. And so growing up, I just remember we finally got out of the church, I think, when I was in middle school, um, end of my middle school years. And I just remember, you know, I have this relationship with the Lord. You know, I was I got saved around 12 years old and, and the, the Holy Spirit has just been in me and, and just around me the favor of god has been over my life from a very young age and i didn't know that at the time but you know there was just certain things that i wouldn't do and and now i know that it was the holy spirit you know guiding me directing me but um I, so i had this relationship with the lord but i was just like you know when i go to college god i just don't know if i'm going to you know whatever church i go to first will be the deciding factor you know i'll still have a relationship with you but i just may not you know go to go to church like that and you know long story short he really blessed me with saint mark and i met the church the church i go to right now and it was just so welcoming so loving and he began to start the healing process of not every church is like the church you grew up in not every you know christian walk your christian you know your faith walk is not supposed to be um the way you experienced it growing up and so through that I just remember December of 2015, you know, doing a lot of music throughout college, obviously, like I said, and, and was singing um, at the time, singing R&B, nothing crazy um, because of, of, you know, the, the Holy Spirit working in me and the favor of God on me it just was heavy in my life. So I, even though I was singing R&B, I wasn't doing crazy stuff, you know, but I just felt this tug and this pull on my heart. Like, you know, you're supposed to be doing um you know, gospel music, you're supposed to be singing for the Lord. I remember at talent shows, I would get up and sing. And at every talent show I did in college, there would always be somebody who would get up and sing a gospel song or Christian Christian song. And I'd just be like, man, it just felt like this dagger was going in my heart. And I would hear this small voice, this still quiet voice saying, that should be you. That should be you every time. And it was so annoying. I'm like, no, like, my gosh, I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm scared of it. I'm, I'm fearful because if I sing Christian music and, and gospel music, that means I'm going to be in churches a lot. It doesn't mean I'll, I'll, you know, every event will be in a church, but I will have to face this fear of of being in different churches and, you know, just being reminded of that trauma and that that experience of church hurt and spiritual abuse from my childhood. So December 2015 comes around and finally I'm just at a point where you know the lord is just really working on me on my heart and 
I'm like, wow, I think, I think I'm needing to make a decision in my life to give my voice to the Lord. And so January 1st of 2016 was kind of, that was a very huge moment in my life of rededicating my life to the Lord, but most importantly, giving my voice to the Lord. And, um, it, it, nobody will ever understand that moment because I was in my parents' house in, in Raytown, Missouri, on my knees. Nobody was home. I was on my knees in the living room, just singing, I surrender all and saying, Lord, here I am. I'm doing the, the, the thing that I thought I would never do in my life. I'm terrified in this moment. I don't know what's going to happen after this, but I'm going to give my voice to you because I feel this calling on my life. I've been running from it for such a long time, but I'm yours. I surrender all I'm yours. And in that moment, I just felt the presence, presence of God. And, and from that moment, moving forward, he has just done so many incredible things that I just, I never thought would happen. And I was fully healed to the point where now I can go to any church. I don't care if you're running around the church, if you're jumping up and down, if you, it doesn't matter speaking in tongues, whatever. And I'm, I'm extremely comfortable and, and, um, healed from that pain and that trauma and um it kind of i wrote about it in in a song called coming back off my first ep which is the title track of the ep and the first couple lines are 23 and it's hitting me how i've neglected to give you all the glory terrified since the age of nine i remember how religion hurt me and i remember when i wrote that song i was like there's no way i'm gonna put this out because i can't tell people about this there's you know i'm too embarrassed or ashamed or and um I put it out and man, the response was just incredible. And the sense of people at shows coming up and saying, you know what, thank you for sharing that because I too have been hurt by the church. I too have experienced crazy stuff within, you know, religion. We're all human um, and we're all not perfect. So you're going to experience that from time to time. But it's so awesome to know how powerful um, our God is and how, how much of a healer he is. And so, um, if that answers your question, man. Yes, that was yes. Incredible, incredible. Yes, it my definitely question. it definitely answers my question and it leads me to my next one which is how easy is it to follow God especially in your 20s when the world is just pushing you everywhere else? Man, uh that is very challenging. Um and and I think it it is for anybody who's in their 20s or who was in their 20s um or who is even a teen who's getting ready to approach their 20s. Um, it is challenging, um, but, you know, it says in the word Romans 12 to be not, you know, conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you can prove what is that good, perfect, acceptable will of God. And, you know, I try to hold on to scripture like that because, you know, you know in this world, especially like on Instagram and, and, and Facebook, um, you're just seeing everybody doing, you know, whatever it is they want to do. And you're like, this doesn't line up with the word, but it's cool. You know, it's fly. So I just want to do it. And it's like, I always have to try and reference the word to, to put myself in check. And I'm not perfect. I'm just like anyone else, just like a human. But um, I do know that there was a standard that I'm trying to live by. Um, and the other thing too, is I have those in my life, which this is something that I encourage anyone. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be an artist or anything like that, but just find those people who can hold you accountable. Um, mentors who, who are in, um, you know, the Christian faith, uh, peers. And so that way you can call. I have a, a friend of mine who I call all the time and I'm just like, hey, can you pray for me? Or, hey, can you can you break open the word and, and kind of share some context about certain scriptures or whatever? Or just, um, you know, send me a scripture, send me a verse every day just to keep me in check. Um, because we're not meant to do this journey alone. We're not meant yeah. to walk this, this faith walk alone. I think so many of us, you know, myself, I man, I struggle with that a lot because I'm like, you know, I'm the person who's always smiling, who's always, you know, in a room full of people, you know, social person. Right. But I'm always like, no, I don't need help. I can do it on my own. I can do it on my own. It's like, nope, no, 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 no. We're supposed to, Jesus had disciples. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, and, and it, not necessarily that he needed them, but it just goes to show the power of community and the power of not doing it alone. So I think the biggest thing I could say is just find those accountability partners, the people who are going to keep it real with you, but who are going to keep it real with you in love, you know, mm. not who are going to bash you, not who are going to, you know, tear you down, but say, hey, bro, hey, bro, like, have you been in the word? Have you been praying? Have you been spending that quiet time with the Lord? Have you been in worship? You know, one of the things my 
pastor, one of my pastors says at churches, especially about the praise team, is if you're going to lead the, the, the praise and worship team, you better be worshiping on your own in your private time. You know, it can't just be showing up on Sunday morning and singing. And so um, I think it is just trying to have that personal relationship. We get caught up in religion so much and in the rules and regulations and, and the traditions. But it is very much about having that personal relationship in your own time and then with those who, who can help hold you accountable. So it is challenging, y'all. It's challenging and it's it's real, right? Like we are humans. We are tempted. It is real. And the word says that we will be tempted. The word says that, you know, crazy stuff's going to be going on. But um, we have this anchor that we can uh, rely on in Jesus. And um, that's the exciting thing. So keep on holding on, especially those in your 20s. Like the world's going to be doing all what it's doing. But be not conformed, but be transformed. Yeah, yeah. And that leads me like to my next thing where in October of 2015, or I'm not sure if that's the correct date, but you were auditioning to be on The Voice. And the world would have said, you know, keep doing what you're doing, but you had to make a choice to actively say, no, I'm walking with God on this one. Yeah, 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 man. Um, I'm not going to cry, y'all. I'm going to be tough. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> it's okay to cry, y'all. But, um, you know, this story just sometimes it, it chokes me up because it just takes me back to that time when, when God really did a move in my life because it was all a part of, you know, deciding to sing for the Lord January 1st of 2016. But um, January 25th of that same year, 2016, just a couple weeks later, I went to The Voice to audition. And I just remember, you know, being excited, but, you know, also having this new, um, you know, commitment that I just made on January 1st. So all the, you know, previous ideas and things that I had, like about me being an artist and what type of artist I was, it's like, well, now God is my authority. And, 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 you know, that's the person who's CEO of my life. So that was the new perspective I was going with. And so it was a crazy journey to get to the voice in the sense of traveling. It was snowing at the time. I mean, it was just this crazy journey, but I get there and um, I just remember going in, there is a, for those of you who haven't, you know, who don't know, maybe you watch The Voice on TV or you watch American Idol on those shows. It's not like how you see it on TV. You got to get through a whole bunch of rounds, you know, in front of producers before you actually make it to the rounds in front of the judges, you know, the, the famous judges, the celebrity judges. And so I'm, I'm in the room. There's 10 of us. We're sitting in a semicircle. And I remember, you know, I was I sang the song Tis So Sweet as my as my audition song. And, you know, everybody stands up one at a time and they sing their, you know, piece of their song and then they sit down. And that's kind of how the process worked. And so everybody's standing up and they're singing. And I'm just like, man, God, when I stand up and sing and open my open my mouth, like there is going to be a transformation in this room like. I don't know why I'm feeling this, but I just, I felt that. And so sure enough, I was number nine. So you got everybody, number one, number two, number three, are standing up singing. And I stand up and I sing Tis So Sweet. And sure enough, the energy, everything in that room just shifted. And, and it was just this powerful moment. And then the last person sings. So everybody's done. And the judge says, um, the producer, and it was just one producer. And he was like, thank you, everybody, for coming. Right now, I just want to see Roy. So everybody else can leave. And obviously I'm like, oh my gosh, like in my head, I didn't, you know, I didn't <laughs> act like that, but I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm getting selected to move to the next round. Like, this is so exciting. Woo. And so everybody leaves and it's just me and him. The door shuts. And the very first thing that he says, listen, Roy, we're not looking for a gospel artist. And in that moment, I was just like, huh? And my response was, well, um, I gave my voice to the Lord January 1st of this year, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be a gospel Christian artist. And, um, and he was like, okay. And then he was like, can you sing some R&B stuff? Like, and I mean, y'all, I was singing R&B all throughout college and I still love R&B to this day. And so I was like, yeah, like I'll, I can sing some. And so then he just began to ask me to sing chorus after chorus after chorus of these different R&B songs. And I just remember in that moment, like, wow, I really finally felt like validated, like this person, this producer can, can't get enough 
of the gift that God has put in me. And he just keeps and can't understand why I would be telling him, you know, I'm going to be singing for the Lord. That's what I'm going to be doing. And so, you know, I sang all those different choruses for him. And then finally he was like, okay, well, let me get your number. And if I want you to move forward, I'll give you a call. And so I gave him my number and then I turned around and started walking out. And then I was like, why did I give him my number? Like, I don't even care anymore. Like I'm so full of joy. And Y'all, that was the first moment in my life where I felt the peace that surpasses all understanding. You know, people say that you hear preachers preaching it in their messages. But I mean, I'm gonna be real. I was like, I don't know if that's a true thing. But that was the very first time I felt the peace that surpasses all understanding because I had so much joy in that moment of like, I cannot believe this happened. You know, here I am having an opportunity of a judge producer is super into the gift that i have like if i just say like yeah i can sing some you know, I'll, I'll do the r&b route like i'm pretty sure i was going to be moving through you know the different rounds and so i was so happy leaving people were asking me like or telling me congratulations man you made it that's how happy i was like literally like skipping outside the room and i was like no y'all i didn't i didn't make it or whatever and um the cool part of this story, though, is just how God works in anything that we do. So it doesn't matter what business you have or anything that you're pursuing or doing in, in your life and you're praying for God, you know, for God to give you an answer or you're you're trying to follow his will. Um, he will confirm it. He will confirm it. And so that's exactly what he did. So it, the audition was in Memphis, Tennessee. My grandmother lives in, in Covington. So that's where I was staying with. That's like 45 minutes away from Memphis. So I go back. I tell her all about it. So excited about like. I can't believe like this just happened. And so she's like, you want to go to church tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, because I was on a Saturday. I'm like, yeah, of course. So we go to church and the night before. So that Saturday evening, the same day I, I auditioned that evening, I remember posting about it on Instagram and you can go and look it up. I, I know Jasmine looked it up just I did. For, <laughs> for herself. You can go look it up on my Instagram page. It was January of 2016. And I made a post about it like, you know. This is what happened. Basically, this, the story I just told y'all. And at the end of that post, I said, you know, I want to put a scripture that I don't know, just kind of sums up everything. And so the scripture that I chose was Matthew six thirty three: Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. And that's the scripture that I posted underneath the long little story that I posted. And so next day we go to church. Never been to this church in my life. Never met the pastor. It's like a small church off the side of the of the country highway like my grandmother lives in the country and so i'm in the church i'm half awake because i'm tired from everything that happened the day before i'm standing in line and all that stuff um and the pastor's preaching i'm barely paying attention because i'm tired y'all next thing you know he's like and if we look at the next scripture the next verse says Seek me first, the kingdom of God. Y'all, I just broke down. I'm crying. I'm just like, oh my gosh. I cannot believe like he is preaching on the exact verse out of all the verses in the Bible. The one that I decided to put underneath this post. And he's preaching on this very, I'd never been to that church before. And that was the moment of confirmation. You know, it's just like, yeah. okay, okay, God, like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know. You know, I don't know how it's all going to wash out, but I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so on January 1st, I felt like God was looking down like, oh, I'm so happy, my son. You're coming back to me. That's great. You're giving your voice to me. I'm so glad you're coming back to me. And then I felt like on January 25th, he was like, prove it. Mm. Prove it. You said this is what you're going to do. You're going to give your voice to me. Here, I'm going to give you this opportunity, this, this, this opportunity you've always wanted. I need you to prove it. And um, through his grace... I was able to do that. And y'all, the doors open. I was opening up for Jonathan McReynolds at a Nesby conference two <laughs> months later. And then in that was in March. And then in May of 2016, I'm singing the National Anthem the Royals. And then the, the December of that year, 2016, I'm recording with the producer who won 10 Grammys. I mean, it's just crazy stuff. Um, doors began to open because when you seek him first, he didn't say some. He said all things shall be added and i i am a living witness and testimony to that so yeah. he's faithful y'all he's faithful yeah and uh my listeners know that i always have a bible scripture so that's probably gonna be the bible scripture so heads up you guys thanks for listening
At this moment, we're going to take a small break just to recognize all of the people that have reviewed this podcast on the Apple Podcast platform. I want to shout out Trina N.B. She said this podcast is fantastic. This is a very informative podcast. I gained a lot of insight on the importance of having multiple streams of income. I'm excited to begin learning about one of the income streams mentioned. Keem, the franchise, said it was phenomenal. Love, love, love your spirit. Keep inspiring and lifting people up. The world has a need for you. Thank you, Keem. Uh Uh-oh, it's Shoyo. She said it's amazing. I love how this podcast highlights different black entrepreneurs who would otherwise would not be highlighted. Thank you for sharing their stories. Juntia B., She said, it's the bomb.com. Interesting topics, amazing guests, and an inspiring message. You get it all right here. Keep up the great work, Jazz. Thanks, Jantia. The Young Black Millennial said, solid information and informative information. Hold on. I got to read that one more time. Solid information and informative information. I'm relatively new to this podcast, but so far I love the frequency, the variety of topics, and the length and the caliber of guests, and has since went back to listen to all the episodes. I look forward to this weekly podcast. The Pretty Plug has done an excellent job in creating an informative and interesting podcast combined with refreshingly straightforward and genuinely conservative emphasis on godly fundamentals. It's so inspirational to see a young black female doing what she loves. I'm so glad to call myself a supporter of the Walk by Faith movement. If you haven't tuned in, do it now. You won't regret it. Girl, we, we listen, we got to thank you, the young black millennial. We have Child of God 122495 who says it's relatable and inspiring. This podcast is so relatable and inspiring. I listened to a few shows and I was able to apply the principles I learned to my life. Here's a podcast that will add value to your life and provide quality content. For a young black inspiring entrepreneur, this podcast providing information I need to hear. And for the very first person that ever, ever rated my podcast, we got out, we have to shout out Miss Curl08. She said it's excellent. Jasmine is always amazing at what she does. Great t- content and guests on each show. So you guys, I'm going to make it a point that if you rate the podcast or give it a few stars or five stars, you know, I'll make sure that I am taking a small intermission and highlighting you and shouting you out on the podcast. For all of you that have done it, I just got to say thank you. And this is just a small call to action. Stop what you're doing. Go to the podcast. Rate it five stars. Leave me a review. Let me know how you really feel. I hope you're enjoying it. And now back to the episode of the week. (laughs) um so i love to do like tell the listeners hey y'all out there get a pen and paper because we want to give you now some expertise on being booked and busy in the in a saturated market right because roy you're in kansas city missouri but yet on every day i feel like you got an event you're being you're singing somewhere you are producing eps like you are on youtube you created a music video like you are making your location work for you where some people will be like no you have to be in new york to pursue this no you have to be in california you have to be in houston you have to be in this you know perfect situation in order to make it to the top but you're literally proving that you can do it in kansas city missouri a place that the music industry may not be as prominent so can you tell people you know your keys to success or or your tidbits on what you've been doing to stay booked and busy in this time yeah definitely i'm gonna do you one better because i'm in wichita kansas so yeah people don't even know where that is they're like where is that uh is it wichita falls texas no 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 it's wichita kansas the largest city in the state of kansas kansas by the way is the state above oklahoma the the state oklahoma looks like uh the knife the chef knife (laughs) yes so kansas is above that state and it's underneath nebraska and it's to the um left of missouri so but i did grow up in kansas city so that's why she keeps reference reference yeah so y'all but um, i made a boo-boo sorry it's wichita kansas wichita kansas yes yes ict um but yeah so 
I think that's a great, a great question. And, you know, don't despise small beginnings. That's, that's biblical. That's from the word. And I think if I could leave y'all with anything in this um, episode, it's just do what you can with what you have, where you're at. That is a quote from uh, Theodore Roosevelt, I believe. And it's, he says it maybe in a little different way, but do what you can with what you have, where you're at. And so, um, you know, sure, like maybe one day I will be in Nashville. Maybe one day I will be in New York or L.A. or Atlanta, you know, in a bigger music hub. Sure. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but for right now, my assignment is Wichita, Kansas, and that's where I want to be. I want to be in the Lord's will. And, and so do what you can with what you have where you're at. And so what that means is, OK, well, how can I start getting booked? How can I um, begin to have these dates that she's talking about where you're, you know, I'm, I'm singing different places and really it starts by just reaching out, you know, doing the hard work. And so, um, just calling different organizations, um, different churches, partnering with organizations. One of the greatest um, things that has helped me, um, in regards to getting booked is, uh, I've partnered with an organization called fellowship of Christian athletes. And that partnership came from singing in a coffee shop. So that's what I mean by doing what you can with what you have where you're at. I, um, I, you know, I wasn't necessarily getting booked all over the place, but what I would do is, oh, I want to do a Christmas show. And I would just go to this coffee shop and be like, hey, can I do a Christmas concert free, you know, and I'll just bring some instrumentals and sing some Christmas songs or can I? And they were like, yeah, sure. You know, why not? We'd bring more customers. And, you know, so just little things like that. And through doing, you know, open mics and, and just getting myself out there, then I ran into this, um, you know, opportunity with Fellowship of Christian Athletes, um, FCA, and they've been able to kind of extend, um, you know, the opportunities for me to go into schools and to go into, um, you know, other churches and, and youth conferences and different things like that. Um, the other thing, too, is just reaching out. You know, for instance, I was at Langston University. Shout out to all the HBCUs out there. Um, I was at Langston University for their homecoming, and that literally was from a cold call. So just looking up their number online and saying, hey, I'd love to be an opening act for um, whoever you guys are bringing in as your gospel headliner for your gospel festival that's that's going to kick off your homecoming week. And so it's just sitting down and doing the research and then reaching out. And sure, you're going to get no's. You're going to get, who are you? <laughs> we don't know who you are. What in the world? But if you just keep, you know, being persistent with it, um, it will pay off. And, and, you know, just continuing to seek the Lord for um, his direction in that. Um, also, you know, begin to network with other artists in your area. Um, go to conferences, music conferences, save up some funds to go to a music conference. And, um, man, you know, being able to network in the past two to three months, I've had the opportunity to um be featured on a couple different artist songs one of the artists um is in toronto canada and the other one is in um texas corpus Chris christi texas and i met both of those artists at south by southwest which is you know a music conference opportunity so um you know just being able to do what you can with what you have where you're at and and it works y'all it really does work and then also being obedient to where the lord would have you you know um I remember this kind of leads into another story about about common, if that's OK, Jasmine. Yeah, sure. Um, Take it away. Yeah. You guys, this guy had an epic moment in his musical journey and I was going to bring it in, but you can do it. <laughs> Tell them about your common experience because it was not common at all. <laughs> yeah. And, I, well, and I, I, I bring it up because I feel like it's directly correlated with um being in Wichita, Kansas, and, you know, what you had brought up earlier about, you know, do I need to be in New York? Do I need to be, you know, but I'm in Wichita, Kansas. Well, um, I remember 2017, this is like April time frame. I was, you know, like, moved to Nashville. I got to, you know, I got to go. And so, I mean, I'm looking up U-Haul prices and, you know, can I find a, another job out there and how much is it going to cost? I mean, I'm just overwhelming myself with it, with that. And so, I just remember like praying to God and, and really going before him and saying, Lord, what, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? So it got to a point where I became so overwhelmed, like, my gosh, like, I don't know, you know, if I'm supposed to move or not. And so I began to yell at God and 
<laughs> yes, y'all, I'm crazy. Um, you know, but I'm but I'm real with the Lord. You know, I don't I'm not coming before the Lord, our Father who art in heaven, how I be that. No, like I'm like, Lord, what's up? You know, and it's okay to have that real dialogue with him. Like he knows what you're thinking anyway. So anyway, I'm yelling at him, like, tell me, God, am I supposed to move or not? Blah. So I go to church the next day, and um the, the praise team is singing about wait on the Lord. And I'm like, I don't want to be one of them church people that's like, oh, the praise team sang about it, so I'm just going to believe it. So I'm like, nah. Then the pastor's preaching, wait on the Lord. And I'm like, all right, God, are you, like, speaking to me, or am I just trying to be churchy or whatever? Then I had a gig later that day at another church, and the host is going in about wait on the Lord. And so I'm like, okay, all right, loud and clear, I'll wait, I'll wait on you. If I'm supposed to be here in Wichita, Kansas— I'm going to be in Wichita, Kansas. Well, how does common tie into that? So that was April of 2017. So earlier that year, um, this is like January or whatever, they had a, a special for the Obamas. Like uh, It was like a Black History kind of special. might have been in February. But um, Common did the song Glory. which So Common and John Legend have a song called Glory. And it's from uh, the Selma movie soundtrack. And it ended up winning an Oscar and a Grammy and all this stuff. And so he did the song with Yolanda Adams, who's a gospel artist, as y'all know. And um, she killed it. Like, she did such a great job. And I was like, wow, like, how cool is that? You know, maybe one day I could do something like that. I wasn't necessarily thinking, you know, the same song, but just being able to do something that is still not necessarily gospel, but like, you know, just something that is uplifting. And so um, on a bigger platform. And so. I just remember um, my EP came out that February and at my concert, I threw Glory into the set list. Like at the last second, I was like, can we do it? And the background singers, everybody learned it and we did it. And then later on, I recorded it and put it on my SoundCloud, um, a mashup of, of uh, Change is Gonna Come Into Glory. And so then uh, June comes and we have this festival in Wichita called the Wichita River Festival. And um, it's kind of like the biggest thing happening here in Wichita, Kansas. And uh, Common was, he, he was going to be the headliner for the Friday night concert. And I just thought, man, I wonder if he's going to do Glory. And if he does Glory, I, you know, I know John Legend's not going to be here. So I, I, I volunteer in this group called Real Men Real Heroes. Um, and I'm a mentor. And so uh, we have all these young black boys that we're mentoring um, who don't necessarily have fathers in their lives. It's an incredible organization. Love it to pieces. And I'm the fifth and sixth grade teacher. And so um, they got tickets to go see him um, VIP. So they were like, do y'all want to chaperone? And me and my friend was like, bet we going to chaperone. Of course. Why not? So I was like, wait a minute. I might get a chance to meet him because of the kids. And so I was like, if I get a chance to meet him, y'all, I'm shooting my shot. I'm going to ask, whatever. We get to meet him. So I say, you know, I don't know if you're doing the song Glory, but if you are, I know John Legend's not here. So I can sing that part for you. And this was his hmm. literal response, y'all. He was like, word? Really? I must have freaked out in my mind. Like, I kept it cool. I kept it calm and collected. But I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, he is like open to this and so i'm like yeah you know and he's like can you can you sing and i'm like yeah and he was like hey y'all can he sing and before they could answer i was like one day when the glory comes it'll be ours it will be ours oh glory and just he was like okay road manager figure this out make this happen and i'm just like i cannot believe this is happening right now so couple an hour later I'm like in the green room they call me they're like come to the green room I'm in the green room like rehearsing and and singing it through he was like do you know the bridge and at the time I halfway knew it so I was that hour between the time I was in the green room I was behind the stage like rehearsing 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 like you got to get this bridge part down um but I had already sang the song at my EP concert I had already recorded it on my SoundCloud so it was like in me like i already knew the song and i love the song still to this day and so i'm i'm in the green room with him singing it for him and i'm just like i cannot believe i'm here his whole band is watching the finals because at that time golden state and the Cavs were in the finals playing and it's just this crazy moment and then they're like okay so you're gonna come on after the dj solo 
And then right before I left, they were like, now listen, we may run out of time, so you may not get a chance to sing. And I'm like, oh, man, like here I am in the green room. We done ran through the song. So then fast forward and, you know, the concert's happening. They're going through each song. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, Lord, please speed up the time. Hurry, 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 speed up the song so I can. Next thing you know, it's the DJ solo. So I go run to the side of the stage. And then it happened. It was three words that I'll never forget. Mic them up. That's all I heard was mic them up. And I was like, I cannot believe this is happening. And they gave me the mic. And then he's like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome my friend Roy. And I come out singing one day. And the crowd goes, I mean, crazy. And it was just this amazing moment of not singing background, but singing equally with, you know, on the same on the same level with Common. And y'all, it felt like I had been called for that moment for like, you know, it felt like I knew that I was going to do that for two months. Like in the moment, that's what it felt like. I was not, you know, I was nervous before, but once I started singing, it was just like, I'm meant for this moment. And it was incredible. Um, it, it's a it's a memory for a lifetime. And the reason why I was pairing that with the Wichita, Kansas, you know, I was talking about, oh, should I move to Nashville? That was in April of 2016 when I was battling with that whole decision thing. And here we are in June of 2016 um, or 2017. I'm on the stage with Common, not in Nashville, not in New York, not in L.A., not in Atlanta, nowhere else but Wichita, Kansas. And so from that moment on, I was like, you know what, God, you have made it very clear. Um, if, if I'm supposed to be going somewhere else in, in this career, you will let me know, but I will not question you anymore. Um, and so it just goes to show you how faithful he is and, and how he knows what he's doing. Even when we don't feel like it, he really does know what he's doing and he will elevate us when we're aligned with his word. Doesn't mean that we're perfect. No, I wasn't necessarily perfect on my faith journey in that, you know, season, but I did have a heart to, um, you know, to, to make my father proud. And um, what was so cool is at the end of that, um, you know, song, because it was the last song in his set, um, I, I randomly said, and I know it was the Holy Spirit, because I'm like, we cry glory, we cry glory. And I said, we give God the glory. And he just took that and ran with it. He was like, we give God the glory. He ended the whole concert talking about, if you see a man and a woman, know that God made him. You see the rivers, the trees, the mountains, God made it. And I'm thinking to myself, this is so crazy. Like God is being glorified in front of thousands of people in downtown Wichita, Kansas, um, you know, due to, you know, the Holy Spirit and just this whole moment. And um, it is definitely a, a, a memory uh, for a lifetime. And I'm just excited about what God's going to do and what he's been doing since since that time. But it just, I want to underscore that I was really trying to move. But had I moved, I would have missed that opportunity because um, God called me to be here for such a time as this in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> Wow. And so y'all just to like just sum it up so y'all understand what happened. Roy was in Wichita, Kansas, place where now nah, you never going to get a chance to be on a big stage. Just so happens that he has the tenacity and the courage and the faith to ask Common, hey, man, uh, I can sing the, the hook. I can sing John Legend's part. Like, can I do it? And Common's like, uh, word. <laughs> And next thing you know, Roy is sharing the stage with Common. And I remember you telling me how many, how many uh, people have, have done that or gospel yeah. singers have done oh that. God. What, what, is it the number like really, really so small? out of all, because obviously he sings it with, with John Legend and then, oh, and here's the God moment. I forgot the whole God moment of it all. Well, the, this is crazy. The God moment of it all. The reason why I was able to do that was because his background singer had to go to her daughter's kindergarten graduation that day. Y'all, like, that ain't nothing but God. Like, had she been there, yes. I'm not doing it. So, um, <laughs> man, that's, I totally forgot about that. But, yeah, um, the cool thing was, like, so I already told y'all about Yolanda Adams singing it with him. Um, but uh, Tasha Cobbs is singing it with him and one other artist. And so, um, well, no, I think it's just Tasha Cobbs, Yolanda Adams, and myself are the only three gospel artists that have done that song with him. And I, I just think that's so crazy. Like just 
speaks to what God will do for you um, when you're walking in your purpose and, and having that faith, you know. Um, and the other thing I want to point out, too, about, you know, having the faith to ask um, was being prepared. You know, sometimes we're trying to do yeah. stuff and walk in faith like, oh, I'm just about to do this. And it's like, we know good and well, like I know good and well, I didn't have no money for that U-Haul and all that stuff. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, I'm about to walk in faith. You know, it's like if it's really God ordained, we will be prepared. Um, some Sure, sometimes you do have to step out on a huge faith, you know, leap of faith where you don't have all the money and it doesn't all look like it's going to work out. But you'll know because it'll be led by the Holy Spirit. It'll be confirmed in the word. Um, but being prepared really helped me in that moment. You know, um, a lot of people say that luck is when preparation and opportunity uh, meet. And, and so it's kind of the same thing with the Lord, you know, being prepared and him providing that opportunity. Um, it really works out in, in your favor. So, yeah. I I agree. And I have about two more questions that I want to hit on. So, you know, Roy, uh, at, in the music industry, you got to have a music video. You know, you got to. It, it's just it's just a part of it. Michael Jackson he started <laughs> yeah. the trend and we have just been, you know, following after that. So, Roy, tell us about the Hallelujah Slide and how you were in Kansas with this YouTube video and just how all of it came together. Because, you guys, his YouTube video has gone viral on Facebook and on YouTube. So just tell us about. Yeah, that. yeah. I love, 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 love this song. Um, so this song is called Hallelujah Slide. Um, and basically the Lord kind of, you know, told me this was in two last year's fall of 2017. Like, Hey, um, you need to make a line dance song. And I'm thinking, no, nope, because any other line dance song that I've heard, those artists, they don't, you know, they haven't been able to do anything else, but that line dance song. So I'm like, nah, I'm cool. You can miss me with it. <laughs> and I just kept getting nudged. Like you need to make this song. And I said, okay, finally, you know, just, reflecting on other things that God has done in my life. Some of the stuff that I've shared on here already. I'm like, okay, like if the Lord is telling you something, you need to be obedient. So I'm like, all right, you give me a beat, Lord, you, you give me the right beat. I'll write it. Let's do it. Sure enough. He gives me the beat in January of this year. And um, the words came so easy. And I was like, wow, God, he was like, well, duh, dummy, I told you to write it. So I was going to give you the words. And so um, it's this really fun song about life. Like it's a, it's a life song. Um, with a, a little nugget tucked in there about, you know, um, the Lord. And so um, made the song, put it out and um, was getting good response, people enjoying it. But I was like, I definitely want to make a music video, obviously, because there's like a dance that goes with it and all this stuff. So I'm like, all right, let's shoot this video. And the day that I happened to plan to shoot it, it was 100 degrees. And I, that's not an exaggeration. It was literally 100 degrees that day. And I just remember thinking like, Oh my gosh. Like, I hope all the people show up. I hope people don't pass out. And the weekend before I was in a parade for Juneteenth and there was a whole bunch of organizations and, and people lined up in the parade, you know, all these youth organizations. And so I was like, I'm going to go around and ask if they want to be in the video. And so, um, man, to God be the glory. They were like, yeah, like, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. And do you know that all of those organizations showed up? um on on that uh, day that we shot the music video we're in old town wichita kansas in front of the old town movie theater and 52 people um showed up for this music video shoot in 100 degree heat and um we had a shaded area and we would be there giving instruction go out we would shoot one shot and so we kind of just did that back and forth till we got everything shot and um, we did a giveaway because I'm all about giving back as well. So I was giving out gift cards because it's important, you know, especially as artists. We're always like, buy this, buy my new single or stream my new single or come to my show or blah, blah, blah. So I always think it's important to give, you know, that just kind of balance that out, that you're not always asking for something, but you're also able to give. And obviously these people came out in this 100 degree heat. And so that was the least I could do. But there was such good energy and God being God, we have this thing called final Friday here in Wichita, Kansas. I was unaware of it. So the day we shot the music video was on a Friday evening. And so I said, 52 people showed up, but by the end of the music video, it was probably a good hundred plus people there because of final Friday and people were just showing up and they heard the music and heard what was going on. And we're just like, there's like so many different people in this music video and so my birthday comes around which is july 15th of this year and i'm like you know, i want to post it as my birthday present to myself 
And um, so I post it. And y'all, this thing almost has 20,000 views on uh, Facebook uh, and almost like almost a thousand on, on YouTube. Um, and, and the response was just incredible. People really enjoying it. And, and I've been able to do it at all the different shows, churches, colleges that I've been at. Um, it's, it's been an incredible move. And just to see people embrace it and know that, um, you know, that the song is called Hallelujah Slide and it's very fun and joyous and everything. But, you know, there is a message in there that, you know, there's there's a, a places in the word in the Bible where it talks about, you know, people worshiped and the walls came down. People worshiped and the armies were defeated without them even picking up a weapon. And so like in our worship, as we're proclaiming, you know, the highest praise of hallelujah, that's when things strongholds are broken and things begin to crumble that are trying to uh, defeat us in our life. And um, and so to capture that in a song with the line dance, with the, you know, people moving and dancing, it, it, it's so cool to see. And I'm just blessed um, and grateful to God for how he's kind of, um, expanded that message um you know it's 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 very much a song about life so if you have family cookouts barbecues you know weddings whatever you got going on be sure to add that to your playlist even if it's the weekend because the song starts off by saying it's the weekend so glad this week is over and done so every friday i typically um get in my car and just play it at least one time just to let myself know the weekend is here and i'm saying hallelujah for everything the lord has brought me through um, through the week and and you know just to see another day but yeah it's it's been amazing to see um this music video and it's kind of like my first official um music video shout out to brave films um for doing an incredible job with the drone shots and um all the different shots and then um shout out to my producer young c for producing the song but yeah thank you for asking that i, lo I love that song so much yeah, yeah, I I listened to it. I have downloaded the entire EP. Your entire EP album is on my Walk by Faith playlist <laughs> that you can get on iTunes, and it's free. Like, you can go to my Instagram and just click the link in my bio, go to Walk by Faith playlist. Roy's entire album, any song he's produced, is on my Walk by Faith playlist. I and, and I'm actually adding all these artists that I interviewed to my Walk by Faith playlist because – Y'all walking by faith. Yeah. <laughs> so, Roy, what can we expect from you in the next couple of years? You know, I don't even need to say five. Like, what's just on your mind for 2019, 2020, 2021? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, I think for me in the in the recent, like, or in the near future, I would say I'm trying to, you know, put out a Christmas song um, before this Christmas. We're going to see how that works out, y'all. It's just scheduling and stuff but um next year i would love to put out another ep um i got some songs that i'm working on right now um one song is called he's got plans for me um based on uh, jeremiah 29 and 11 like um and i love it because it's just rem a good reminder um y'all get a sneak peek the chorus i'm not gonna sing i'm just gonna talk it the chorus is every day that i wake up he's got plans for me no matter what it looks like he's got plans for me so i gotta get up get up keep my head up trust in the king of kings Every day that I wake up, he's got plans for me. Um, and I love that. Anyway, so there's a whole bunch of other songs that I'm working on for an EP. And then I think down the road, like years to come, I'd love to transition out of, of you know, doing engineering and then music on the side to doing music full time. So that's the, the, the goal, the prayer, um, do more shows, kind of get a chance to travel um, internationally, um, especially with the, the collab that I've done with my Toronto brother, um, shout out to Terrence P, Terrence Penny, um, you know, and just be able to spread the music. Um, you know, my music is not necessarily traditional gospel. And so, it, you know, it, it has its own lane um, per se. It's kind of in the same on the same highway as Jonathan McReynolds, just in a different lane. But we're on the same highway. Um, and so, you know, just kind of getting the music out there more um, developing um, in the word more, I think is something that I really want to do. Um, and I'm happy that I'm pursuing that right now in the young men's Bible study that I'm a part of. Um, but as an artist, yeah, I just want to grow, just want to grow, want to learn, you know, some musical instruments, but just continue to put out more music, more content um, for y'all to rock to, for y'all to worship to. And, um, you know, to just celebrate our King of Kings and Lord of Lords and, and, to proclaim the good news. The gospel is the good news. There's so many people, you know, more, more than sliding around or doing a line dance in the hallelujah slide, more than, you know, jumping up and down to the, the, the song Jehovah, more than anything, 
I really do want to keep um, an intentional pursuit of trying to reach others. You know, we get a chance, people, us as Christians, like we get a chance every day to wake up with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. We get a chance to live life. So no matter if we're down or if we're up, we know that we have this constant, um, you know, presence and person in our life. And that's something that we we should not just hold for ourselves and so more than anything i'm just trying to keep it at the forefront of my mind with this music and with um you know the gifts that god has given me to be able to share that with others and hopefully bring others into the body of christ and let them know that if you've been church hurt you know through church hurt god will heal that if you've been through something else god will heal that and if you um if you if you want to make sure that your eternity is secured you need to know this person and his name is jesus and so i think that's a overarching thing that I would love to do in, in, in whatever I'm doing moving forward is just trying to be intentional. Sometimes in this new age, we kind of forget that. It's like, I'm just going to go to church and have a good time and worship and get my praise on and I'm going to get fed. But we need to make sure we're reaching out to others so that they can get fed, especially if they don't know Jesus. So, yeah, it's kind of what I'm, I'm in pursuit of. Okay. And, you know, I got a famous question that I ask everyone what does walking by faith mean to you? Walking by faith, um, what it means to me is trusting in the Lord um, and trying to be um, aware of his, the purpose he's planted in you, aware of the gifts that he's given you, and then doing the, the very title of this podcast, Walking by Faith with all the things that he's given um, you and just trying to align with his will um, and understanding that we have a good father who is the ultimate authority and the dreams that we have, um, the goals that we have, we can dare to pursue them in a bold way um, because of who we serve and who's the head of our life. And so that's kind of what walking by faith means to me, that we can take those risks. We can take those calculated risks. We can take those opportunities um, to reach further into the destiny that God has for us and the plans, as we just talked about, that he has for us um, if we just commit to walking by faith. And sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, but it's most certainly worth it. So, yeah. Yeah. And the Bible scripture that I want to tie into this episode is Matthew six thirty three, which is, but seek you first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. And that just simply means every day when you wake up and you have the intentions, just good intentions of God. I'm your daughter. God, I'm your friend. God, I'm your like you. I look up to you. You're my dad. Like I'm going to seek you first. And I know you'll add the house. You'll add the Amen. dreams. You'll add the career. You'll add the friends. You'll add the relationships. You will add the things that are supposed to be in, in my life, and you're going to multiply it, right? So just seeking after him first, that will never – it will never steer you wrong in whatever it is that you're doing, you know, because I don't want to seek to my job first. I don't want to seek in another person first because those things are there. They may not last. And, and people fail us, not because they, they just want to, but we're all human. But the one person that will never fail us, nor leave us, nor forsake us is God. And so I am just I'm just telling y'all like Matthew 6, 33, that's been a cornerstone for Roy. That's a cornerstone for this episode. Seek him first. Seek him Man. first each and every day. And everything else will be added unto you. Don't don't look to your friends and be like, well, if I do what they did or, you know, there's the keys to success here. If I do that strategy, that's when I'll get it. No. When you seek him first, that's when everything will be added unto you. Amen. I think about Peter, if I could just add, walking on water. Yeah, go ahead. Peter walking on water. That was the first thing that came to my mind. And he was seeking Jesus first. So he's walking on the water, but then he got distracted about the waves and the storm and everything going on. And what happened? Mm. He started to sink. And so that just kind of, you know, that's word confirming word in the sense of, man, you know, once he was seeking him first and putting him as the number one priority in the focus, he was able to walk, you know, and so on the water. And so I think it's the same thing. Like we have these opportunities in life to do that. Um, but to your point, 
just seeking him first. And every single thing that we're in need of is, is right there added to us. It will be added and in his perfect Amen. time. Amen. And it look, it ain't gonna come when you <laughs> want it, but he gonna always be Amen. on time. <laughs> so Roy, I gotta say thank you for telling your story, for sharing your talents and your gifts with us, for even giving us a little bit of that musical voice that you have, because it is genius, it's brilliant. I love it. I met Roy singing. <laughs> I can't tell you guys that enough. Literally was at a Nesby conference and he was just like, Nesby, everyone stand up. And he had a whole region five, like music song. <laughs> and I was like, what, who is this guy? But it, it was just all a part of his personality and just like how driven he is as, a, as not only a man, but a, a man of God. And Roy, tell the people where they can find you on social sure media. Sure thing. So if you want to join me on this journey, on Instagram, I'm at, at Roy T3. So that's at R-O-Y-T and then the number three. And then on um, all the other social media outlets, it's Roy Moy the third, R-O-Y-M-O-Y-E, capital I, I, I. Um, and then I do have a website. It's www.RoyMoy3Music.com. Um, but yeah, everything else is pretty much Roy Moy the third. And then Instagram is at Roy T3. Yeah, and if you didn't catch all that, you know you can look into the podcast. Um, just trail notes, and you'll be able to find all of his information there. So without further ado, thank you for listening to episode 2.6, really episode 33 on the Walk by Faith show. And this episode is called Singing, because he said so. Y'all have a great night, and I'll see you next Wednesday on the Walk by Faith podcast. If you want more content like this, make sure you give the Walk by Faith podcast a five-star rating and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You can follow me on Instagram at underscore underscore the pretty plug and follow all updates on the podcast at WBF Podcast. To those already supporting the show with a monthly subscription, thank you. If you're not already a supporter and you'd like to help make this show possible, tap the link in this episode's description or visit anchor.fm slash jasmine a dash stith to become a monthly supporter. That's all, folks. Tune in next week for another episode on the Walk by Faith Show.